Welcome everyone to episode 11 of SpaceX in the News. We got lots to go over today, lots of stuff. We're gonna talk about an interview Elon did with Popular Mechanics, there's really interesting stuff in there. Some tweets Elon posted concerning the Starship's heat shield technology, both good news and bad news concerning Starhopper's development, the countdown to the first crewed Dragon capsule flight, and everyone's favorite boat, Mr. Steven. But the first thing we're gonna cover is what's behind me right now. Let's get started. When the Falcon Heavy first left the launch pad on February 6th of last year, I posted my first LEGO project to LEGOideas.com. It's actually that model you see back on that wall behind me. Then about four months later in June, we reached the 10,000 supporter goal needed to put this thing in LEGO review. That review period started in September and we're almost to the end of it right now. But one month after reaching that 10,000 supporter goal, my brother and I came together and decided that we wanna work on a new project. So we dubbed it the Big Falcon Project and we set out to build what was known at the time as the BFR. So just a few quick details about our rocket. It stands 45 inches tall. It's about 1 to 103 scale. It can stage just like the real Starship. The set has over 2,300 pieces and comes with two display stands that allow you to display it horizontally and one display stand that allows you to display it vertically. It has functional fins and grid fins. It also comes with the ability to switch between sea level engines and vacuum optimized engines. I mean, this is a big fella and it's a really fun build. The thing I love most about the Saturn V rocket that you're seeing in the background here was the actual building experience. I built that thing at least 15 times since I've owned it. And I just, that, that's what makes it such a great model for me. So when my brother and I were designing this rocket, we decided from the very beginning that we really wanted to make the building experience fun, fresh, and exciting. So in my very own personal opinion, the best part of this rocket isn't even what you're looking at. It's on the inside that's really cool. My brother who co-designed this model with me will actually be coming on this YouTube channel this week where we will actually get into great detail about the rocket. So guys, you know, these videos have been getting over 50,000 views. So if everybody watching this right now just hits that pause button and then goes over to the Lego Ideas website, link is in the description, and then just takes a couple minutes to either log in or create an account really quick, it's free, and then hits that support button, boom. We're done, we could get it done in just a day or two. Let's do it, let's set a record. Yo, let's make it known to Lego. We want SpaceX and we want it right now. I want it, so you give it. Okay, so moving on to actual Starship and super heavy news. A few months ago, Elon had an interview with Popular Mechanics where he talked about why he transitioned from carbon fiber to stainless steel for the Starship and super heavy. So to summarize the highlights of this article, Elon said there were actually a couple reasons why he made the switch. And at first he had a tough time convincing his team to get on board with it, but then eventually they came around. First he noted that while it is true that carbon fiber is a lot lighter than stainless steel, if you do make the stainless steel alloy at very, very cold temperatures, it actually becomes lighter than carbon fiber. And secondly, and probably even more importantly, carbon fiber is a lot more expensive than stainless steel. While it will cost you $135 per kilogram for carbon fiber, that same amount will only cost you $3 in stainless steel. And I guess a bonus third reason is it's also a lot easier to work with. So these positives are probably also reasons why Elon recently decided to really get aggressive with the Starship and Super Heavy you know, construction schedule. So one of the things that SpaceX is actually working on right now for the Starship is a heat shield. And although this method that SpaceX is working on isn't exactly a new idea, it is however not tried or tested on a spacecraft before. So Elon's been sharing some information about what SpaceX is doing behind the scenes right now concerning this technology. And basically what it is is that on the bottom part of the Starship, where the heat shield would normally go, they're actually just going to have two layers of stainless steel. And in the middle of the two, they're actually going to pump super cold methane. Now the cooling process doesn't end there. They're actually going to put tiny holes in the bottom of the Starship that will allow this fuel to leak out upon re-entry and act as a buffer between the outside hot gases and the exterior of Starship skin. Now there are a lot of questions that need to be answered that no one really can yet until tests are done. And while methane won't burn without an oxidizer, there is oxygen out in the atmosphere. However, maybe most of that's burnt up around the spaceship because of the plasma, I don't know. These are questions above my pay grade. I can tell you though one thing I did like, and that was the video Elon posted of them testing the heat shield at SpaceX facilities. And to answer your question, no, those aren't boring company flamethrowers. So moving on to Starhopper. Now I'm one that always wants to hear the bad news first, because I always like to end things on a positive note. So. Let's start with the bad news. The test vehicle actually recently had a minor setback when a Texas storm the other night actually blew the nose cone over and damaged it. The damage looked pretty brutal and Elon did say it would take weeks to repair. So I think it's reasonable to assume that any hopes for a first launch in February are basically shattered now. However, the good news is since this little mishap, things have continued to progress for the other half of the Starship. The actual fuel tank bulkheads have been installed 
And furthermore, the launch pad for Starhopper is starting to take shape. Helium tanks have recently been spotted on the premises. It looks like we might actually be seeing the construction of the launch pad here really soon. A lot of things happening on the Crew Dragon front. The booster just recently underwent its static firing test with the actual Crew Dragon on top. Now, ever since the catastrophe of Amos 6, we haven't seen SpaceX test fire a rocket with an actual payload on top. And I think we can safely assume that this was at the insistence of NASA, who has a track record of wanting to do these kind of tests in a realistic sort of fashion. As of the recording of this video, the launch is slated for February 23rd. I'm sure NASA's two astronauts are excited to watch it happen as they continue their training. And what's really cool is that SpaceX recently released some video footage from inside the arm on pad 39A as it swung over to the Crew Dragon capsule. So you kind of got to see what these two astronauts might get to experience when they load up to get in the Crew Dragon come hopefully this summer, June sometime. And the final thing for today's video is Mr. Steven. It was recently seen in port with two nets and one fairing in each net. No one really knows what to think of this. Some people think that maybe Mr. Steven is gonna try to catch two fairings now, even though it hasn't even caught one yet, we don't think. However, it did just return to port from a second recent catch test, but we don't know how that went. So that's all I got for you guys today. I hope you found it informative. If you did, make sure you subscribe and hit that notification bell so you don't miss an episode. I'll probably be putting these videos out every week for the foreseeable future, just because there's so much going on. And again, I'll be releasing another video here pretty soon on the Lego Starship and Super Heavy we built. So stay tuned for that. Thank you guys so much for watching. Godspeed.